Rocket League has been out for almost 10 years now, and what started as a simple car soccer game has evolved into one of the most mechanical and competitive esports. Today, I'm joined by two former pros to discuss what's new and ranked, what's changed, and most importantly, what you, yes, you, the average competitive ranked twos grinder out there, what you need to know in 2024 to rank up. But I know what you're thinking, Luke, why should I listen to you and these pros? Well, the pros kind of go without saying. Shock was an RLCS player and former North American overall MVP, and Freaky was a European pro and RLCS quarter finalist, so they know a thing or two. Now, when it comes to me, I'm just a peak 1700 rated player. That puts me in the top 20,000 players, but maybe more impressively, I've remained grand champ for the last two years, despite averaging less than two games per day. And to top it all off, with the help of Shock, I just hit 1700 again this season, only averaging 7.5 hours of playtime per week. So if you're interested in working with Shock, Freaky, and the rest of us inside the GCB, DM me with a keyword Shock or Freaky, and we can get you started with coaching. My Discord is first link in the description below and enjoy the video. Freaky, we'll start with you. Why should the people listen to you? What's your experience? Overall, my career in Rocket League, obviously, I've uh, been one of the longest standing pros um, at the time, played basically from the early stages of Rocket League when RCS just got introduced up until the time where the system got completely changed into the new format. I made world championships multiple times. I've been close to actually being the MVP of a league play season, made RCS with basically three or four different teams so i think that i have a lot that can you that you can connect to my name in terms of experience in rocket league and especially on the highest level of rocket league right it goes without saying for the people at home who don't don't watch rlcs don't worry all you need to know is he's ssl ten thousand hours yeah. in the game <laughs> very good shock too i'll let you introduce yourself <laughs> yeah so kind of the the reasons i always put out why i like am to be like trusted as a coach or like why it's valuable to listen to what i have to say about the game is well i always start lead with of course that i played in the rlcs um you know for four years i have uh thousands ten, ten thousand hours you know that that kind of stuff is nice but i always kind of like leading with the fact that uh this game and its mechanics never came like easy to me it was never like natural and the way i had to learn was very meticulous and precise and you know i had to go through all the little details and when you do that it becomes really easy to explain it so i actually had to think about every little thing that got me to that point so yeah. i feel like that makes me a very it's very easy for me to coach when i've already thought it all the way through like that right I have a lot of respect for both of you guys because I think a lot of people watching just think, oh, professional gamer, they must have been cracked at games since the start. But especially in Rocket League, of all games, nobody's good to start. So I have a lot of respect. I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say. And former pros turned coaches. I think it's going to be a cool angle. Really? Let's start here. What types of players in RLCS, in ranked, are most successful or the ones that you work with are most successful versus what types of players are least successful when it comes to like improving and learning and ranking up? Well, I think the most important thing, like the one common denominator between all the most successful people are people who are extremely self-accountable when it comes to um, mistakes and when it comes to their own uh, competency. You'll get a lot of people who overestimate their own abilities and underestimate the abilities of their teammates and their opponents um, and that can really hurt you that's kind of the biggest common common denominator between all the all the people who play and do well yeah i think also like um when i start working with a new client and one of the first things he throws at me is like oh i'm so good but i can't rank up because of my teammates that's typically like the number one sign why you probably do not rank up by yourself as efficiently as um, as you could be, I would say. Obviously, um, trusting in your own mechanics, in your own skill is a good thing, but at the same time, drastically overestimating yourself is a big 
flaw, I would say, that causes you to not realize how many mistakes someone can actually make. And um, the biggest thing that that improvement requires you to realize is making mistakes because you are not perfect. Nobody is. And um, yeah, so thinking that most of the reasons you lose are connected to teammates is, in my opinion, one of the number one reasons why people just don't rank up as they wish they would would rank up. It's not my teammates? Is that what you're saying? No, it's <laughs> never your teammates. No. <laughs> I, I thought your rank was what the average rank of the teammates you get is. It's, is it your own average rank? Is that, is that how the rank system works? Actually, Luke, it's just, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. the, only, the only person whose fault is, all, everyone who can't rank up, it's your fault. No yeah. one else is. Jokes aside, I love how both, both of you, you didn't say, oh, it's, it's, it's all about mechanics, all about game sense. The first thing both of you guys went to is mindset. Yep. The biggest predictor of somebody who's going to rank up and improve fast, mindset. You didn't say age you didn't say whether they were cracked at fortnite or cs it's the mental yep i know we've had over 400 people come in between all the coaches in the last 12 months how many guys have you coached individually in the last couple months i don't actually keep a, a set track of them but um if i had to estimate i'd say like a somewhere between like 150 and 200 would be my guess so you're not out of touch with the rank system no, no, no. <laughs> you know Diamond better than a Diamond knows Diamond. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of Diamond games. I want to ask you guys about that because you've, you've played at the highest level. You've coached people every level. It's no secret that ranked is hard and it's getting harder. That said, what is your advice to the average player to rank up faster than everybody else is ranking up? If everybody's so good, how do you beat the meta? How do you like beat other players? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in my head, like the the most simplistic answer is that you have to be more efficient than your the people you're up against. Um, and by more efficient, I mean you don't just hop on the game and you just play rank twos for five hours and then get off. Um, you just, you have to be coming in with a plan when you play. You have to be making sure that. The information you're taking in is good and not just like your friends who you know they made it to champ three and your friend says all you have to do is chase every ball and never get off it and it's like <laughs> it's like you know okay yes you're champ three but that doesn't sound quite right it is it um so you have to you have to be uh, filtering the information you take in and then you have to be efficient in trying to apply it instead of autopiloting when you play yeah i think improvement in general uh, it doesn't matter if it's just ranked or or um also just individual improvement is connected to you playing with intent you want to improve not just playing to play because uh, especially during my experience as a as a professional player there was days where you really just played to play the game to stay with everyone but you didn't really just improve but uh, if you want to actively get better than everyone else you obviously have to focus on the things that others might not be able to do or are a little bit better at than you. And uh, so you really need to get into every game with the expectation, okay, I want to perform my actual best. How can I make sure I'm doing that? And that obviously connects again to figuring out mistakes because in the end, ranked is that part of the game that you have to execute everything you can do rather than learning new things. Right. It, it's about focus when you play. Yeah. Is there any difference in how fast you see students improve between the ones who do 80% mechanics, like free play, training packs, uh, and 20% ranked versus people who do like 80% ranked and only 20% training mechanics? Yeah. I mean, the players that go through coaching with me, the more ranked they play, the more games they play, you see a drastic improvement in their game sense. Like, they get better at positioning themselves, rotating, um, understanding where they're supposed to be and stuff like that, because all of this is connected to having opponents and teammates and stuff, while all of the players that hop onto the game just to spend three, four hours in free play and don't play as much ranked or, or casual games, they often, you can, you can see them becoming better individually, but once you throw them into a ranked game, 
similar mistakes keep happening because your individual skill is not the biggest deciding factor to winning games. It's also how you can perform around teammates against opponents. So um, th there's a difference and I usually just recommend getting or having a healthy balance where you find out how much individual practice do you need to stay on a confident mechanical level while also how often can you play the game without tilting. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. And just to add on to it, I firmly believe that um, you could actually overtrain and like you could overtrain in free play and training packs and you could underplay in your ranks. They're like, yeah, I, I can hit this arrow shot that I've been practicing in, in my training pack. I can hit it every single time. Um, so I must be good at arrow shooting. And then you get into a game and you can't position to get yourself in a spot to do an arrow shot. So, you know, it's it's good to be able to do any sort of mechanic consistently. But if you can't, you know, apply it effectively into a rank game, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I always recommend like the people I coach that we shouldn't be um, foregoing playing rank games uh, in order just to, you know, sit in a training pack. It, they're supposed to supplement each other. They're supposed to work in tandem. Yeah. So for the average player, you recommend balance. What does balance look like if everybody's getting more mechanical? Does that mean more packs or more workshop maps or more training? Or is it 50-50 is it, is it, is the way to go in your guys' in your guys mind? I think it's less about the uh, amount uh, and more about uh, proficiency. Like, so mm. it's it's less about like I'm going to practice my flip resetting for an hour. It's I'm going to continue to practice flip resetting until I'm do when I'm doing this shot in the training pack. I can do it this amount of times. Like, uh, you don't want it to be just on a time limit. You want it to be uh, results based when you are training. And yeah, still balanced. Uh, like you, you still shouldn't be overdoing it, obviously, until you fit in the time. But you want to you want to be a bit more um, results oriented with your training packs rather than just oh, I practiced it. Yeah, right. It's less. I have to do sixty minutes of rank twos and sixty minutes of training packs. It's more. I need to make sure that my game sense and max are equal. And if my max are super weak, then I need to do more time in training. Or if my game sense is super weak, then I need to get out of free play. I need to go play ranked. And review yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a huge aspect. Like reviewing games, watching replays, analyzing games. I mean, coaches obviously can drastically help with that because the more experienced, the higher level of player you are, you see more mistakes. I think the biggest issue is that players simply don't understand what they're doing wrong on the field if it's not a mechanical mistake. Because it's easy to figure out, hey, I missed that ball. Well, my mechanics sucked. But it's very hard to figure out why did you miss the ball in the first place? Were you in the right position? Was your approach the correct way and stuff like that? All of this plays a huge factor into it. Yeah, and even um, I even tell uh, my students, um, I mean, obviously we do plenty of replay reviewing, but when I... When I tell them to bring a replay for next time, and I say, you know, pick out a game, you know, your average rank game, um, average close game. Um, I also tell them, if you've got the time, this is really helpful. Review it yourself, like you're the coach. Like, actually try to think through the thought processes and situations, and try to figure out situations where things went wrong, how you could do it differently. And then when you bring it to me and we do it, you can compare your thought process to when you're trying to critically think about the game to mine. And we can see where those differences lie. That can actually isolate problems in your thought process versus just me. I mean, obviously, it's always really important as a coach to try to get someone to understand why instead of just listen to you. But it, that makes it even easier when they've already thought it through themselves and they're not just hearing, oh, this needed to be different. They maybe have already came to that conclusion in that spot themselves. And then you can figure out where the discrepancy is in understanding. Yeah. When I was in high school and I used to, and I was taking my last math class, I would like look at the answers and they'd be like, oh, I know that. Like I know how to mm -hmm. get that answer. And you'd see the answer and you're like, yeah, I, I get it. But you actually don't know how to find the answer. Mm -hmm. So like when you listen to somebody's thought process, you, they could be like, oh, I saw him here. That's why I challenged. And you can be like, yeah, he was there, but that's why you shouldn't challenge. Here's why. 
and you can explain it. And if you're struggling to find good teammates or you just plain want help, I started Rocket League's largest competitive Discord community. Inside this free Discord community, we have over 50,000 members from every ranked region. Meaning when you join, you can queue with players 24 seven from all around the world, or just ask questions and get advice from people at or ahead of your rank. It's completely free to join and you can leave whenever you want. Click the first link in the description below to check out the free Discord community and back to the video. I mean, Rocket League overall is so situational that even if you have a basic understanding of how it's supposed to work out, um, there's not one rule for all the problems. Like there's one uh, in math, you have like one equation for everything and it's supposed to work out. Uh, that's not how it works in Rocket League, and you need to figure out what you have to adapt based on the situation. And if you just don't have that game sense, eventually you're going to hit a skill ceiling that prevents you from getting Grand Champ or SSL. Yeah. Even rules like back post that work 80% of the time in Platinum or 80% of the time in Diamond as you rank up become less and less true. Yeah. Yeah. It's connected to just the ability of what high level players can do, I always explain it's like, for the basic average player that has not the best car control, somewhere in diamond, somewhere in, in low champ, rotating front post is probably the absolute worst thing you can do because you just can't aerial backwards. But if, if you watch pro players, if you watch SSL players, they, they make that mistake a little bit more often. Yet it never seems like a problem for them because they don't struggle taking off backwards. They don't struggle getting off the, to an area of their own backboard. So similar rules that work. Yes, you can even say SSL players, if they rotate far post, it's probably an easier game. They might not actually make sense in, in a way of comp um, comparing it from a diamond to an SSL. Yeah, and I mean, basically, I always tell everyone that you should, in any case with Rocket League, because it's so dynamic, that... You should never be playing off of um, habit or off of assumption. You should be playing off the information you gather with your eyes as you move around the field. And some plays will dictate that you go back post, but others will not. And But if you just know that, oh, back post is supposed to be good, I'm going back post, you're going to put yourself in bad situations when you could have critically thought about the play as you're in it and then found that I need to rush in that right now. It's dangerous versus... I'm going to rotate wide and back post where normally that would be good. It isn't in that circumstance. Yeah, the game changes at, at different levels. And you need to just watch the opponent and know what they can do. Because the people, they could do different things at different levels too. Yeah, the way you play defense has to change based on who you're against too. Yeah. It's hard for somebody who's listening right now who doesn't, who's never been GC to understand how somebody could rotate front post and then use the backboard to save it. But I think something that no matter what rank you are, you can understand is mechanics. For example, like speed flips. When Musty popularized the speed flip or fast kickoff five years ago or whatever, it was a GC plus mechanic. Now, some even diamonds is, are speed flipping. Plat, plats. Yeah. Do you guys find yourself teaching mechanics like speed flips to lower rank students now than you than you would have like three years ago, five years ago? I, I think so for sure. I mean, like I teach speed flip to everyone that I coach. I mean, usually everyone I coach is plat plus. But the reason why um, is twofold. One, obviously, like everyone else is becoming as the game progresses more and more people get more competent and so you know you've got player those players in plat doing that and you want to keep up in that way but also those some of those mechanics like the speed flip is not complex it's just it's just you have to get used to doing it and you have to have the knowledge of how to do it so it's easy for me to tell anyone of any rank about how to do it. It's just that they get comfortable with the controller in their hands. They have to do it enough times. Everyone's learning those mechanics earlier and earlier because they actually have figured out that it's actually not that hard. It's just about acquire, acquiring the knowledge and putting in the repetitions on it. Yeah, it, it's it's overall the evolution of the game, really. I mean, um, if, if you compare Rocket League in 2024 to what it was in 2015, um, it's almost like you have a completely different base game set up right now because everything that a diamond can do uh, nowadays is what RCS looked like in the first season. And um, 
while back then there wasn't as many content creators that popularized, uh, popularized uh, mechanics the way Musty does it nowadays or Verge even does it. It's that you saw someone do it in your game and you were like, whoa, I want to be able to do that as well. And then you tried, you tried back in those days. Nowadays, you just go on YouTube and be like, okay, I want to learn this. And we as coaches, we're essentially that step for our clients. We want to help them prepare themselves for the future because how Shock already said, those mechanics are not necessarily hard to pull off. You just need to have the understanding how they're set up, what you have to put into your controller or keyboard and stuff like that. Um, and in, in my opinion, most of these mechanics don't even require a specific rank of you to be able to do them because even in Platinum, a speed flip could help you win games, right? It's just that nobody thinks about doing a mechanic if you don't see at least 90% of your opponents do it as well. Yeah. Ideally, you're learning it before people, right? Yeah, and that's how you improve yep. faster than everyone else around you. Okay, I like that. So what are the mechanics, on average, you're, stu you're, trying, you're telling your students again and again to learn first, or that you're having to convince them and they don't believe you, but when they do, it helps? It depends on the rank. For sure, it's, for example, if I had to tell what, what do I tell a platinum player to learn first is catches and dribble control. Because the game in platinum looks like a ping pong game where it's just you hit it to the opponent, the opponent hits it back to you. The moment you suddenly catch the ball and force opponents to having to challenge you, you dictate the speed of the game. So everyone in platinum areas that can take control of the ball automatically um, decides the speed if it goes quick or if it goes slow. And then if you rank up, a diamond might need to do something else and a champ might need to do something else. So it's not always just one specific mechanic. It's always what, also what your individual playstyle prevents you from doing. Because if I see someone that is really good mechanically, there might be... Um, no issue with me telling him mechanics, but it could be something like a me the mechanic of rotation, if you think about it, right? Uh, it's not just one specific mechanic that every rank has to be able to pull off, but more so what can you currently not do and what do you need to learn in order to improve? Yeah, and then on top of that, it is, again, as dynamic as the game is, it makes learning it dynamic in that sense. Uh, but if I were to generalize, I'd say like speed flip and wave dash, and I just kind of group them together is recover your, you know, movement mechanics. Always like the first thing I touch on, because it's, you know, like I mentioned, it's not that hard. It's just about knowing how to do it. So it's one of the first things I always go to with, with anyone who doesn't know how. And then after that, I always make sure that, you know, someone can, well, fast aerial, but if we're beyond the rank where they know how to fast aerial, um, it's always dribble control, very, very important. Being able to just catch it and flick it is an underrated um, like kind of superpower in terms of the low ranks. Like If you can catch the ball and, and flick it just anywhere near the net, you'll probably generate uh, an obscene amount of goals. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you know how to use directional air roll continuously because you know the things you can do a directional air roll and if you know how to control it well really opens up your ability to to use the air effectively from there you know and we've talked it's very basic stuff but it actually does work because rocket league you can't bring over concepts or skills from other games like those things even though they're simple in nature will do take a lot of time to learn and they're really good to start with for people right it's sort of those very specific things that most people don't just learn naturally. Like mm -hmm. people naturally will get a little bit of practice with shooting or a little bit of practice hitting the ball off the wall. But if you don't train catches and dribbles, probably not going to learn it out of nowhere. If you don't train right. directional air roll, it's not just going to come to you. If you don't train speed flips, it's not one day you're just going to start accidentally speed flips. You have to put time in the, learning those things. But if you do, you're just going to be ahead. Two years ago, I said... Anyone can get GC with zero mechanics. I made a video with that title. Today, do you think players that you're coaching can still get GC with zero mechanics and why? Zero mechanics is obviously a little clickbait 
<laughs> um oh you got uh, me <laughs> yeah zero mechanics no um fundamental mechanics yes like or you know or you could say no advanced mechanics yes because the the thing about it is yes even though with everyone becoming more and more advanced um you also find somewhat of a lack of uh the fundament fundamental like foundation where people actually will lack that i mean even even like in some of my like you know if i just still casually play ranked and i'm you know i'm at like 2000 mmr or something in ssl i still find people who have no fundamental knowledge of how to challenge for example uh or how to get the ball off the opponent get get off their possession and you know if you can find a way to challenge correctly or at least at least mostly correctly you can find a way to maximize your rotation off the ball and be bumping people and be getting in their way um and you can control the boost in the game and you never give away possession for free you're good at catching it and just flicking it like we just talked about you can catch it and flick it you can make simple power shots off the wall at the net you can do those things you can absolutely make gc i mean those those players will not punish you if you're doing all those things correctly fundamentally so and then it's just about you know i think if you just play enough you absolutely would yeah it's it's how shock said with like the difference between a fundamental mechanic i also like to just say basic mechanic and a advanced mechanic because do you need musty flips or breezy flicks in order to reach grand champ no would it help you yes and uh, four years ago there was a time where i think rocket league was at a state where mechanics weren't as advanced as they are nowadays which is why having a better game sense rotating correctly positioning yourself better automatically gave you a little bit of an advantage over the rest of the lobby um while nowadays you just being in the right position does not equal to you outplaying everyone in the lobby and um th that's how i could consider why why there was a little bit of backlash from like the the different time zones in the explanation of those videos um yeah it's it's how he already described it it's it's connected to you obviously being able to pull off the mechanics that are considered basic for sure you don't need to have any advanced stuff going for your name in order to rank up become a grand champ um but if you struggle with basic mechanics i can consider in 2024 you're probably not gonna reach grand champ anymore um because the game has just evolved up until that level where grand champs nowadays are really able to do things and um yeah yeah i mean just not I mean, not to say that not to say that it's um easy like i, I talked about like it was easy like just working off of, like your basics and your fundamentals you can get to grand champ but like those players in gc now they can get like like we just said really quality first touches they can um they can be like deceptive and do a lot of faking especially on dribbles on the ground um they, they can do advanced things that others will not so it would take you some time and maybe maybe a little bit of luck but like yeah you could get there and not but i don't want to say it was easy because it's not it would not be easy to do so but more more than possible yes yeah i think some people see those titles from me and they're like yes i knew it i'm plat and mm -hmm. i i never need to learn speed flips and i can still do it no right. if you if you refuse to learn speed flips it will make your it will make things harder i will never forget that when we did our first coaching session shock you gave me a long laundry list of things to work on but one of the things was Luke, you just you, you need to work on your solo plays, and you gave me that. Uh, you gave me the realistic air drills pack, and I've been I've been doing that since. But I realized I could have kept ranking up without learning solo plays. But learning air drills, learning flip resets, makes it easier than swearing them off for sure. Yeah, but why not use every uh, everything at your disposal? Like you know, yeah. I mean, can just stick with what you know. When I get the ball on the wall. I tap it off once and I shoot on net. Sure, I mean it's not not a bad play, but it's a much better play and much more effective way of ranking up if you can consistently outplay your opponents when you can do a, a flurry of stealing shots and flip resets, um, and you know fakes in the ground pinches. You know when you can when you have everything um, at your disposal like in your arsenal, uh, 
you become much harder to defend. You become a much more dynamic player, and you're you can just abuse a, different kinds of play styles that you're against too. Yeah, and I think that's actually a huge thing that that pros have going for them because if you look at some of the highest Rocket League players, the reason why they're so hard to defend is not because let's say uh, another pro player from another team does not know how to defend him. It's just what are you gonna do? Everything that you set up in in a way to prevent or defend makes the attacker be like okay i'm just gonna do something else then and now you're sitting there be like okay i decided already for something but now he just go he's just going to outplay me with his adaptation so i have to adapt and that's what pro play really is because all they do is they adapt on what they see which is why shock already said like you're supposed to play with what you're seeing on the field and pro players do that so quickly that even the smallest adaptations look like mad mechanics it's not that they're doing something that a freestyler can't do al already. It's just a freestyler is most likely not going to adapt it that quick because they have a little bit of a pattern, a rhythm that they're going to pull. While a pro player like Zen is just going to do it on the fly. Rather than deciding for a play, he sees what's going on and decides it midway. Yeah. I posted some clips of me finally hitting resets in game because I, so, I was so proud. And one of the first comments was something to the tune of, I can't believe your GC2 lobbies look like this, Luke. My <laughs> Diamond 2 lobbies, I would never get this much space. And I'm like, so I just composed myself. I'm like, yeah. maybe you're just the unluckiest player ever and your Diamond 2 lobbies are harder than my GC2 lobbies. Or maybe you're not as quick or good at adapting your air dribbles as you are in free player as you think you are you know what i mean that's that's funny it's just, it, it's always it's always stuff like that <laughs> a, a, anything to not be accountable <laughs> for, for how things go right <laughs> a, anything right it's blaming your rank or blaming your your lobby or teammates yeah and if everyone's early challenging don't take your time yeah. <laughs> just set it over them <laughs> Right. It's, you know, right. It's connected to actually so many things because if I play with friends that are way below my rank, I suddenly look like the most mechanical player ever. Right. But when yeah. I play in an SSL lobby, I'm like, okay, I can't do stuff because that guy is already in my face. It's not that I have the I don't have the mechanics to outplay him. It's just he knows I can do it, so he adapts his challenging to my speed of play to prevent me from doing it, and. That's how you know you're a higher level player, because if you don't have space in your lobby, it just means you have to do something different. You have to adapt. Yeah. Maybe set it up differently. Maybe don't be as, how do you say, like, how easy to read, really. Right. The difference between the Champ 3 with mechanics and the GC3 with mechanics, they both get the ball on the wall. They both see the guy sitting on the ceiling, ready to ceiling challenge them. And the GC3 says guess I can't go for a ceiling shot and takes the ball down. But the champ three says, I'm going to go for a ceiling shot anyways, or I didn't even yeah. see the guy in the first place right. and still goes for it. It's mostly like, um, I didn't see him in the first place. Cause they're not looking because they, yeah. when they get to the wall, they think, Ooh, I want to do this mechanic this time. I want a ceiling shot this time. I want a flip reset this time. But instead the, the more advanced player goes, which mechanic do I need to beat this opponent when he's here? Reminds me of some advice. This is like two and a half year old advice when I did my 30 days of playing with pros or 60 days of playing with pros where Rapid Rapid told me something that relates exactly another former pro for those of you who don't, don't know, you know, probably 15,000 hours in the game. He said, getting to a high rank in Rocket League is playing the best option, not the option you want to play. So if your teammate is going for it again and again and again and again, and you want to go, but he's like, I'm not fucking leaving. He's just driving around. <laughs> you don't go. It doesn't matter how bad you want to go. You have to wait until it's your turn. And it's like the same, like if you're on defense and you're stuck on defense and you're trying to preserve boost, you want to hit the ball away. But if you hit the ball away, you'll give it back to them. Then you have to do what you, you have to do what's best. You don't just get to do the play you want to make. You can't just go for the air dribble off your side because it's, cause it's what you want to do. If there are two guys back and it's not happening, it's not happening. Do you feel like, people can learn from that at every rank for sure every yeah. rank seriously every rank something we it's, all all don't do well enough sorry good no it's just it's just connected to you doing what works right if you just force what you're confident with but it doesn't work you'd be stupid to try it over and over and over again because that's just the uh, the definition of insanity and 
the adaptation is one of the biggest skill sets in Rocket League because if you realize um, that some specific mechanic might have worked in Platinum and you ranked up to Diamond and now it doesn't work anymore, you you just forcing it on everyone in Diamond is just going to send you right back into Platinum where it worked again. And it's important that you realize what's the best option, not what's the only option because in Rocket League, especially with your skill set, with your inventory of mechanics, you can pick from so many things that just deciding for one thing might work out one out of ten tries, but what about the other nine? That's where having more of the mechanical abilities comes in. Honest opinion, where do you see the game going in five to ten years if things just continue as they are and there's no crazy change? Or do you think there's a crazy change? That's going to come. Where do you see Rocket League in five, ten years? I see it as I, I definitely don't see it dying. I, I don't I don't foresee that at all. And the reason why is because uh, I mentioned it a little bit earlier about transferring skills and such. But no other game even remotely competes in the space that Rocket League is. Um, and so it, as long as Rocket League has a monopoly on this type of game, which it always will. Um, or I, at least I think it always will. Um, I really can't see it dying in terms of like the healthiness of it. That's to be determined. It the one problem with Rocket League is that it's so unique and so in its own thing that it's kind of hard to branch out from what it already is. It's hard to really say that there's going to be like some big change. I it would have to be something with. Um, I don't think the mechanics of how your actually car works will change. I think it would have to be something with the field you play on would have to be like the biggest change like boost on the ceiling bigger nets nets above the ground stuff like that smaller nets you know things of that nature would have to be the way it changes in terms of the competitive sense i don't really see that changing um i think it'll remain a healthy game i don't know if it'll ever be like a top top thing um because of also that that it doesn't really change or evolve but i just i don't see it dying i think it's kind of the overarching point yeah it's if you look at some other competitive games that have been in the scene for a very very long time the reason why they had to come out with new things was because for example counter strike was was actively challenged by valorant valorant did something different so counter strike had to bring out some new game that made the game feel different obviously then they moved to a different engine and stuff like that i could imagine that for rocket league as well not necessarily that it's going to be rocket league 2.0 but um yeah at some point rocket league is probably going to have to evolve into a new engine to just be more future proof uh better better physics more ability for mechanics stuff like that but the uh, the idea of Rocket League itself is probably not going to change drastically. Um, for the average player base, in order to lure it back in, uh, get some more people to play the game again, I would see more game modes, um, more customization things, like uh, you can play your own tournaments on specific um, on specific maps or something like that. So you, you set up entire leagues all just by yourself, um, that could that could be something, maybe an online league where where it's just like you sign up and you don't know who you're going to play. It's just going to happen, like the current tournament format, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the the player base, the the average player base probably has to get some new things, some new options. While the competitive scene of Rocket League is probably not going to change drastically within the next couple of years because it's established, it's the best of the best, and uh, it's going to stay that way. Yeah. Comp can't change, so it's if Epic brings something to get casuals back in, or the league idea is really interesting. Something to connect casuals to comp players. Something to bridge the gap. And like a, a like a rec league or a casual league that gets yeah. people more invested could do it. Yeah, I don't think Rocket League's dying either. I think nope. that's mostly just for the titles. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, yeah, because yeah, a, Epic can mess up a bunch, but I mean, you could mismanage this game as bad as you want, it probably won't die because it's just like I said, it just has such a pure, unique idea. Right. Don't get any ideas if any devs <laughs> are watching. <laughs> please, Epic, please. <laughs> don't don't try to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> Shock Freaky, thanks so much for coming on, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.
Thank you.